chapter 37. We're going to do some reading, so if you don't want to read, just listen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says this, Ezekiel chapter 37, starting in verse 1. It says, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones. Someone say prophesy. Prophesy. And say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Verse 11, then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open up your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Before you're seated, I want you to encourage three people and tell them this promise is mine. Come on, tell them them the title of my message. You take your seat. This promise is mine. I have a question for the church here this morning. Have you ever been put in a moment in your life where you know you needed to do something, you just didn't know what you needed to do? Anybody ever been there? I have a funny story, but just a fun fact about me is I always have awkward encounters with babies. Any parents here? (laughs) Come on, encourage me, parents. Any parents here this morning? I always have the most awkward encounters with babies. And I remember not long ago, I was there with my friend Luke, and uh, we were at a service. And, you know, the preacher is opening up with the scripture, and this baby just locked eyes with me. Like, just dead on, locked eyes with me. And so I'm like, oh, my gosh. And Luke's like, hey, bro, the, the baby's looking at you. So, you know, I'm trying to focus. And so I got my iPad, and I, and I covered the, the baby's face. Like, I just, I don't want to look at this baby, you know. <laughs> Put my iPad down, the baby's still staring at me, right? And so I remember, I was like, oh, my gosh, this baby's just locking eyes with me. So all of a sudden, the baby starts to cry. Anybody heard a baby really cry, like real cry, like anguish, brokenness? The baby starts to cry, and I remember the baby started crying hysterical. And I remember in that moment, I felt so much pressure to help this baby or to help the situation, but I didn't even know the baby, right? What am I going to do? Like, oh, I'll hold it, you know? The baby just started to cry, and I felt pressure to do something, but I just didn't know what to do. And so here in this passage of Scripture, we come to... A a man of God by the name of Ezekiel. Anybody know of Ezekiel here this morning? We read about Ezekiel and the Bible clearly paints a picture of a vision that God showed Ezekiel. The Bible says that the spirit of the Lord set him in the middle of a valley and he was in the valley full of dry bones. The Bible says in verse 2 that they were very dry bones. And the Lord asked Ezekiel a key question. He said, can these dry bones live? And here this morning, one of the first things that jumps out to me is the prophecy that was given. Someone say the prophecy. 
The Lord took Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones and he tells Ezekiel, he says, I want you to prophesy to these bones and I want you to say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You know, as I was in prayer, I began to think about this valley of dry bones and I couldn't help but to look at this and say, you know what, we're here in in a scripture where God is showing him dry bones and you got to understand that this took place thousands of years ago. And I think even today, if we walk by a valley of dry bones, it'd be kind of weird, wouldn't you say? And I remember I was looking at this, and I couldn't help but to think about this prophecy that even thousands of years ago, when you looked at a valley of dry bones, what it was symbolic of or what it suggested, it suggested that there was a violent death that took place in that land. That it wasn't just a normal death or a normal passing, but when you walk by a valley of dry bones, it suggested that it was a violent death. And these bones were symbolic of God's children. They belonged to men who were once living, who were once thriving and living a life of God. But at one point, maybe sin crept in and death happened in their life. And I don't know about you here this morning, but the more I begin to chew in this scripture, the more that I begin to read this, I believe that the Holy Spirit just began to remind me a little bit about dry bone seasons in my life. I I don't know if I'm talking to the right people here, but I can remember clearly times where maybe I was in a dry season, times where maybe sin was trying to creep into my life. Am I talking to anyone? Times where maybe there was the devil trying to grip me, times where I thought that there was no hope. No hope, seasons in my life where I could admit that I needed a prophetic word. And when you look at the role of a prophet, you know, a prophet is someone who spoke on God's behalf. And the more that I begin to think about these dry bone seasons in my life, I I can't help but to be thankful for some of the Ezekiels that God brought into my life. I I don't know if anyone has a leader here this morning or a pastor here this morning or a woman of God here this morning that says, you know what, I'm here for you, Fern. I want to let you know that you will be that man of God. I want you to know that you will take nations. I want you to know that you will see your family saved. I want you to know that you will get stronger. I'm thankful for my dad that said, son, you just need to rest at the cross. Son, you just need to get back in the race. I'm thankful for the Ezekiels in my life. That in a dry bone season, we're able to speak a prophetic word over my life. I'm thankful for my pastors, for my brothers. I'm thankful for the family. I'm thankful for the Ezekiels in my life that were able to prophesy life into me in a dry season. And I believe here this morning that maybe there's some here that say, you know what? I also have an Ezekiel in my life. I believe that there's some here that are thankful for their mentors and their pastors But I also want to encourage those here this morning that maybe you say, I I don't have that support system, Fern. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, you know what, I I feel like that's been something that I've been lacking. Well, I want to encourage you here this morning to let you know that you have a family right here in Third Wave Los Angeles that says, you know what, we're in your corner. You know what, we're on your side. You know what, you're going to get through this season. I'm thankful for the family of Third Wave LA that says, you know what, I'm still in your corner. I want to encourage you here this morning that maybe you feel like you've been lacking that. you got a family right here in Third Wave LA. Can the bass say amen? amen? I begin to look at Ezekiel's in my life and the Holy Spirit began to pose a question in my heart. And I believe that it, 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 it's suitable here this morning. When is the last time you prophesied life into dry bones? I believe when it comes to words, many of us love to receive a good word. Come on now. You come into church and you say, I'm ready to get fed. You put on VOI Plus and you put on the archives and you say, I'm ready for a good word. Many of us here this morning know what it is to receive a good word, but the question is, can you give a good word? Can you give a good word to people that are in a dry season? Can you give a good word to someone that thinks there's no hope? Can you give a good word to people that think that all hope is lost? Did you know that there's power in your words? The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Other translations say that life and death are in the power of the what? Of the tongue. Tell the person next to you, tell them there's power in your words. 
You know what I love about Ezekiel is you come to this moment with Ezekiel, and I love that Ezekiel didn't take the step to speak his own words. We can see in Scripture that Ezekiel only spoke what God told him to say. And I believe that very similar to Ezekiel, I believe that God is raising up a generation right here in this third wave revival. That maybe you might not have all the words to speak. Maybe you step back and say, I, I, I'm inadequate. I'm not the best preacher. I'm not the best leader. I, I don't know if I got it all together. I want to let you know that God will supply you with every need that you need. Every word that you got to speak. God is ready to give you the words. That just like Ezekiel, you can take a model or a reference and say, man, I might not have all the words, but I know that my God in heaven will give me every word that I need to preach this message, to go out to the street corner and to let people know that Jesus loves them. You may not have all, all of it together, but I believe that just like Ezekiel, that God wants to come upon a man or maybe come upon a woman and maybe use them to be a pulpit for our generation. You might not have it all together, but I believe that just like Ezekiel, God used them as a pulpit to speak to dry bones. And here today, I want to encourage you that all you got to do is just keep on saying yes to God. I believe that there's some people here, maybe in the front row, that says, you know what? I, I don't even know how I got here 5, 10, 15, 30 years later, but I just kept on saying yes to God. I just kept saying yes to the challenges that God brought to me. Here today, I want to encourage you to just keep on saying yes to God. Keep on seeking God's face. And I believe that God will use us to prophesy to a generation. Can the church say amen here this morning? Not only do we see the prophecy that stands out, but one of the second things I see is the product. Someone say the product. Come on, nudge someone next to you. Tell them the product. We see that Ezekiel took the step of faith to prophesy in verse 7. The Bible says, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. We see that when Ezekiel obeyed the Lord and prophesied, what God spoke came to pass. Some would say it came to pass. You know, I like what Pastor Ryan says, and I, I don't know when I... <laughs> When I wrote this, but it was in the nugget book somewhere, you know? Anybody got good notes on their phone? You're like, I don't even remember where this is from. I just had to write it down. I have a quote here that says, product is always connected to the character of the owner. Product is always connected to the character of the owner. What does that mean? That means that what you produce from your life is a direct result of your character. You know, when I think about product, I'm reminded of the great legacy that we have here in Victory Outreach International. You might be new here and you might not know the legacy that we have. But I can clearly remember reading the books or coming into Victory Outreach. And I'll be honest, I didn't know what I stepped into when I came into Victory Outreach. To be completely honest, I thought it was a car club ministry. <laughs> be completely honest with you. It's 2010. My parents divorced. We're no longer in the church that we're from. And my, my grandma, she's from Pacoima. <laughs> and she says, I think I have an old homeboy that has a church in Palmdale. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Step into a gang night. And at this point, I'm, I'm not the man you see today. I was awkward. 100 degrees, I had a hoodie on because I was insecure about my weight. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm, maybe I'm talking to myself here. No one's insecure. Uh, okay. Insecure at a gang night. My sister, Danielle, social butterfly. Hi, how you doing? I'm in the back with headphones on. I'm like, I ain't talking to nobody. <laughs> right? And I remember there was a, it was a crucial time, but we stepped in, and it wasn't that long later where, where you get hit with the vision. Come on, you get hit with the ghost and the vision, right? And I begin to learn and read about the legacy that we have in Victory Outreach that in 1967, we received a heavenly mandate to start a church for drug addicts and their families. This was during a time where there was a serious drug epidemic. This was during a time where they would scoff and laugh and say that you could never start a church with junkies for their families. 
It was there in 1967 where our founders, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie, in the heart of East L.A., began to prophesy to a group of dry bones. We read the stories, but I believe them to be so true. Right there in Glest Street, probably full of heroin addicts, kicking drugs. And they begin to prophesy that one day, some of them would take the nations. One day, some of them would become pastors. One day, some of them would do mighty exploits for the glory of God. How many know here this morning that our founders would prophesy to their church of dry bones? And when the Holy Spirit would come upon them, they would begin to speak everything that God had planned for these ex-drug addicts. Pastor would say that some of you guys are going to do great things. And he was prophesying to strung out junkies, people nodding out all of because, because of all the heroin that was in their bloodstream. The first wave also had the valley of dry bones to prophesy to. But I believe it is true that no matter how dead a situation might look, when your character is right, the product will always be good. Can I say it again? It don't matter how dry or how small a situation might look, when your character is right, the product of your life will always be good. I want you to ask the person next to you, how's the product of your life? Come on, ask someone else. Ask them, how's the product of your life? In other words, the question being asked is, what have you produced in your life? We hear it said best that we're not just looking for faithful, we're looking for fruitful. Someone say fruitful. And I I believe here in Third Wave LA that we have a model and we know it to be the show and tell model. You know, what's interesting is that many of us, when we look at our life, we can flex in a little bit of how faithful we've been. Many of us have never missed a service. We've never missed an event. We've never missed a convention where we're at every fellowship. But the question this morning is, have we been fruitful? Have we accomplished the set goals that we have for our life? Have we accomplished the set goals that we have for our base? Have we accomplished the set goals that we have to reach our generation? That when we go to the tree of our life, can we go and can we pick some good fruits? How many know that these are convicting questions to ask ourselves, but they're necessary? And I want to remind someone here this morning that we come from a lineage of men and women of God who have proven that their product is good. We've seen a first wave of revival that have had good fruit to show. A good group of a second wave of revival that have a good fruit to show. And the question is posed to the third wave here in Los Angeles, do we have good fruit to show? I believe here this morning that this is going to be a moment where we take the step from being faithful to fruitful. There is a harvest here in Los Angeles. There's a harvest in our generation. There's a harvest right there in your workplace of people that have still yet to taste and see that the Lord is good. And I believe that the word of God says it best that in Romans 10, 14, how will they hear without a preacher? How will they hear without someone to prophesy? How will they hear without someone to say there is hope for your family? There is hope for your loved one. There is hope for your financial situation. How will they hear without a preacher? Some will say the product. I believe that as we move forward with our life, that God will use us, use our life as his pulpit. And we hear it best, and I believe Pastor Ryan also said that it's our time and it's our turn. I love that because it's (laughs) nerve-wracking. It's easy to watch, but then you take the step and you're like, man, what am I doing? Someone say the product. Not only did Ezekiel prophesy, not only did he have product, but we see that there was a promise. Someone say the promise. Someone say the promise is mine. In verse 11, then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Anybody ever felt cut off from God before? You know, it's crazy because the Bible says that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, but it's a true feeling we have, right? It's like you ever feel disconnected from God? It's a real feeling, and God's like there, right? It's like, come on, I haven't left you. (laughs) 
It's a real feeling. It says, we are cut off. Verse 12, therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, my people, I am going to open up your graves and bring you out from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. We see here in the passage that the people of God, they they felt dried up. They felt disconnected from God. The Bible says they felt cut off from the Lord. They felt with no hope. And we see that God gives them a promise and it's a promise of restoration. It's a promise of bringing back together as if nothing ever happened. And in a similar sense, how many of us know here today that we have promises here in our ministry? Here in Victory Outreach International, how many know that in just, a, in just about a week, we're going to be making history once again at the Anaheim Convention Center coming together with the family of Victory Outreach International. We got family that are already flying in. They're already here. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't got registered, you got to get registered. Talk to me. Talk to anybody. You see anybody in the? Talk to anyone. Go to the next. Go somewhere and get registered, because once again we're making history. And you know what's heavy to me is that in the years, and and many years ago, God gave our ministry promises. Isaiah forty-five two and three talks of treasures of darkness. And how many can agree here this morning that we've seen God's faithfulness in that promise? I'll give you proof. Is there any treasures in the house this morning? Is there any people that say, I I, I was lost and bound to the things of this world? Come on, is there anybody that could blast on a street corner and say, I just want to let you know that God can set you free from drug addiction, from gang violence. Come on, any treasures here this morning? We've seen God's faithfulness when it comes to his promises in Isaiah 45. But how many know that we also have more promises? And we see Isaiah 54, 2 and 3, a promise given to us. And it's a promise of God giving us authority to take the gospel to the nations. We know that it's a promise of dispossession. It's a promise of God-given authority. Where God says, I will go before you. How many guys know that that's fire right there? Ain't nothing better than God going before you. I I, I can remember many moments where I tried to attempt things without God going before me. It's all bad. (laughs) But how many know when God goes before you, it's like, it don't matter. All hell could break loose and you're just still walking. You keep pushing. You're still, you feel good. And it's a promise that was given to us, giving us authority to take the gospel message of Jesus to the nations. You know, and in this last year of being here at the base, I I thought I understood promise. We're talking the title, The Promise is Mine. I I, I thought I I knew promise. I thought that I embodied it. I preached it. I communicated. I I could memorize it. In the UTC, I I passed the test. (laughs) I, I really thought I understood or that I had good comprehension. And just when you think you know something, you step into the room with the apostle. (laughs) Or or how about this? You step into a room with leaders that that are bigger than you or have a bigger mentality than you. And just when you think you know something, if anything, you realize that you don't really know that much. Just when you think you know something, you step into a room and you say, man, there's so much that I got to unlearn. And what's heavy heavy to me is that every moment... Pastor Sonny talks about the third wave. He always references the promise of God. And I begin to think about this. Why? why? He always, you know, of course, we, we could talk about age and we can talk about a new wave and a new generation. But how many know that a man or a woman of God, when they reference the promise of God, they understand that the word of God will never die? How many know the Bible says that the word of God is Alive and active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. We know the scripture. 
And so when you think about a promise given to a ministry, the reason why we've been able to push past 25 years, past 50 years, I believe go to 75 years. Why? Because God has given us a promise from his word that is alive. It is active. It is not dead, nor does it dwindle. It is something that will keep refining. It'll keep going. It'll stick with the times. Why? Because it is eternal. That until the day we meet our maker, until the day we step into heaven, this is a promise that will never die. And we look at Isaiah 54, we've been given a promise to dispossess nations. Can you imagine that we look at our founders and even that first wave, all of the accomplishments that we can give them. Just recently learned about TV programs that they had. From books to international church plants to running a global ministry. And even still, you can step into a room, and even with all the accomplishments, you can still feel a, 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 maybe a dissatisfaction in the heart, saying, God, I know that you still have more for our ministry. God, I know that you still have more because when we look to the world, there's people dying. When we look to the world, there's drug addiction still happening. So God, I know that you must have more for us to accomplish all around the world. If it's in Amsterdam, then we'll go to Amsterdam. If it's in South Africa, then we'll go to South Africa. If it's in Brazil, then we'll go to Brazil. Why? Because I know you still have more for our ministry. And how many know that here today there's still more for us to do in our generation? I believe that the the prayers of our founders should be the prayers of our hearts. Not believing God for more wealth. Not believing God for more status or anything like that. But I believe a sense of urgency should be in the heart of the church to say, God, extend my life. God, enlarge my capacity. God, give me a mega mind, a mega heart. Why? Because I want to accomplish all that you have for me in my life. Where the prayer isn't for selfish gain, but it's for an extension of life to see this promise come to fulfillment. And I believe here today that we have a challenge ahead of us here in Third Wave Los Angeles, not just to reach LA, but to reach the world. It might happen right there on Pico and between Crenshaw and Arlington, right there at Catch One. It might just happen next week at a concert where someone comes in and they don't know what they're stepping into, but all of a sudden you see a a base full of church members that say, hey, I just want to let you know you got family in Third Wave LA. I want to let you know that you're in the right place at the right time. I want to let you know that I was just like you, lost and bound, but now I got my family back. Now I got a job. Now I, I was about to say, now I got a wife. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Getting, Getting ahead of myself here. Come on, Mary, people, give the Lord a good hand of praise. I don't even want to look at this front row. They're saying, whoa. (laughs) Is there anybody here this morning that says, you know what? God has given me more than I could ever ask for. Come on, can you give the Lord a good hand of praise, Third Wave LA, that God has been faithful as we all stand here this morning. And as the worship team makes their way up, someone say, this promise is mine. We have models in our life, pastors and leaders, that have held on to the promises of God. And my question this morning for the church is, What are some promises that God has given you? Hey, this is Brittany here, and we want to thank you for tuning in to Third Wave LA YouTube channel. We pray that this message has spoken to you. And what we want you to do right now is to make sure you like, subscribe, and share this link to someone that will also be impacted by this message. Also, if you want to stay up to date with what's taking place at Third Wave LA, make sure you subscribe to all of our social media platforms. This is Third Wave LA, where hope is found and purpose is lived out.